What's up everyone? I am currently in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, I am out on the Jonathan Davis solo tour. Uh, the singer for Korn, he has a solo project, solo CD coming out at the end of May. And uh, I've been out now for five weeks on tour. We did some Korn dates and then straight into this uh, solo tour. Five weeks into it, still three and a half weeks left. And then after that, I have like 10 days off and then go over to Europe for three more weeks. So a lot of touring right now, but um, I have a few pickups I want to show you guys. I'm trying to film from my hotel room. Lighting's a little shitty. I got to be a little bit quiet because it's almost midnight. Um, but one of these pickups was pretty epic. Um, and it was from a, a guy that picked up stuff from the past. Uh, but I haven't filmed a just game related video in almost six months now. Um, the last few videos I filmed, one was from Australia, one was from Japan. They were sort of like travel videos, a little more music related, some video game stuff. But this is the first game only, like good old game pickups related video that I've done in six months. So bear with me if I'm a little rusty, I apologize. Uh, but to get started, um, like I said, there's two pickups here. The first one... I have had almost no true days off uh, for quite a few weeks now. Uh, most of the days off that we've had, basically I've just rested. Um, but one day uh, that we actually were doing a show, there was a record store right next door. And um, a little tip, if you ever uh, happen to see like an independent record store um, that still sells like CDs, vinyl records, that kind of stuff, um, go in and check and see if they have some video games because a lot of the ones, even in my area, do. A lot of times their game section is like full priced, you know, eBay prices or whatever. But every once in a while, you know, like like this shop I went into, they had a little section way in the back corner and it looked like no one had really shopped it in a long time. There was a lot of like PS2 and original Wii games and they did have a few newer things. But I asked a guy that was working back there, I said, hey, you know, looks like games aren't really, you know, this store's big thing. Um, do you think like the prices, are they set in stone or could, you know, you haggle a little bit? And he's like, sure, you know, I guess I don't see why not. So I picked out a few games and he dropped the price. He actually had the sticker gun with him and he was changing the price as we were going along. And I was like, how about this one? How about this one? At first I picked up a handful. It was these four. We have a sealed copy of Minecraft on Xbox 360. Uh, there was a Zelda Phantom Hourglass, Animal Crossing Wild World on the DS, obviously, and Call of Duty Black Ops. Uh, at the time uh, that I bought this, at least, it's still trading in for like $18 at GameStop. The Call of Duty games on the DS are worth some money, kind of harder to find, um, and I guess they're still popular, so keep an eye out for Call of Duty games on the DS. But anyways, so I picked these up. A lot of these were actually in like these locked cases so you couldn't you know take the game out obviously until you brought up the cash wrap i get out of the store i didn't even think about it animal crossing wasn't in the case it was empty so i had to go back in and i ended up getting these when i bought them it was 9.99 for animal crossing 8.99 for black ops uh 14.99 for phantom hourglass and then they were doing a buy three get one free sale so the minecraft ended up being free that was original they, he had dropped it down to nine bucks from like 12 or something but that ended up being free went back in said this wasn't in there ended up swapping it for uh pokemon black version 2 and the reason why i didn't pick this up the first time is they weren't willing to drop this one down too much they had this around like 20 dollars, but he ended up dropping this one down uh to trade for the animal crossing that was missing they felt bad so I made sure that was in there and then left the store. Um, later on, I had a little bit more free time. Like I said, it was a show day. I went back in um, and kind of took a little bit more time, looked at you know every single game. because so it was like uh, stuff that was on a shelf behind a counter. So I really couldn't touch it all easily. Uh, and I grabbed two more games. These were both priced right around 10 bucks. Asked them if they would do uh, $5 a piece. So basically two for 10. Um, and I picked up Valkyrie Profile Lineth on the PSP, complete in there, and then Tenchu 2 on the PlayStation 1. I'm actually pretty sure I don't have this for some reason. If I do, oh well, I got it for five bucks, whatever, but um, this still goes for like around, it's funny, the sticker on here from GameStop says 19.99. It goes for about 20 bucks complete, so picking these up for five dollars a piece, good deal. Uh, Anyway, so that was the end of that pickup, but just a little reminder, 
check out record stores, independent record stores, and see if they happen to have a random case in the back or something that has some games in it, because I've had some good luck at haggling there when it's not like their main bread and butter, when record vinyl or CDs or whatever, or they had a huge movie section where that was what they were really selling. All right, now on to the mega pickup for, uh, for this video. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, Magic Mike is his go-by name. He was in a couple of Video Game Sellers episodes. He goes to the Retropalooza conventions in Texas, um, Houston, and Dallas. And he he's the guy, he's been in the videos, I always buy a big lot of stuff from. He usually has a suitcase he uh, rides up with and a couple big boxes in there and I just go through them. And it's usually towards the end of the video uh, where I just buy a massive amount. Um, we had been in contact. He had mentioned that he hadn't really picked up a lot of new stuff. He still had most of the stuff that uh, either I didn't buy or anyone else didn't buy from the convention back in, I guess that was what, Dallas? Yeah, back in like September or so of, of this last year, of 2017. And he said there was a few new things. He sent me some photos and I was like, I'm going to be in your area. Um... If you want to come by, I would love to buy some stuff from you. <laughs> and there's no way I'm going to get the, all this shit shipped home or like through uh, either the airlines or pay, without paying shipping. So luckily we have one show in Florida. We have it in Orlando. And I'm going to drop this stuff off with Katie and she's going to take it home because there's two big boxes here. Uh, so I'm going to start going through this stuff. Um, it ended up averaging out to literally straight up five bucks a game. So if you want to look at it that way, that's how I like to look at these kind of things, because when I buy a lot, it kind of goes with, well, there's 98 items here. How much does that total out from what I spent? Well, around $5 a game. Some of these are worth about 5 bucks, but most of these are worth a decent amount more. And like I said, he had kind of, he hasn't really found much. He hasn't had time to go game hunting. None of this was his collection. This was stuff he bought for super cheap to flip or trade, you know, for more. So I... Don't know how much of a profit, obviously, he got on it, but uh, I, I know he ended up getting, you know, at least some money on top. Uh, Doom 3 on the Xbox. I'll go through some of the eh, titles, whatever. Good game, but, you know, value or rarity-wise. Ghost Recon, Advanced Warfare, Xbox, Castlevania, Curse of Darkness. Original Xbox is such an odd system. There's some great games on it, but not a lot of people come, especially, like, to the flea market, um, looking for them anymore. Uh, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2. We got actually two copies of that. I think one, you know, one's just the disc in there, but the other one is is complete. Blam. Next up, Area 51. Uh, this one features the voices of David Duchovny and Marilyn Manson. Interesting cast of characters there. Uh, we have Ease the Ark of Nefishtim. Probably not the perfect pronunciation, but close enough. Complete copy right there. And two copies of Star Wars Battlefront 2, both greatest hits, eh, but great game. Psychonauts uh, from Tim Schafer, really cool game. Remember uh, Katie's little brother played this a bunch when it came out, and I was like, very funky. Oh, there's also a copy of Psychonauts on the Xbox in there. That one does not have the Manuel. We have Half-Life 2. Fortunately, not a perfect port of that, but hey, at that time, that was the best I could play uh, of that version, uh, of that game. The House of the Dead 3, Phantom Crash, Speed Stealth Survival, we have Sonic Mega Collection Plus, uh, back to some PS2 stuff, the Metal Gear Solid Essentials Collection, which is 1, 2, and 3, a <laughs> another triple pack. Uh, for PS2, Medal of Honor Collection, not something that I necessarily would really want to play myself, but hey. Um, this one stinks, it doesn't have the manual because I don't have it yet for my collection. Magic Pingle, The Quest for Color, like I said, no, no manual, but overall in, in really nice shape. We have uh, Spyro, Dawn of the Dragon, uh, this like on the 360 and the PS3, and even the Wii uh, version's a little up there in price, but the, the PS3 version I think is like the most expensive of this. Just very uncommon to find. And uh, Inuyasha, The Secret of the Cursed Mask. There's a version of this that comes with like a trading card for back when they had the trading card game for Inuyasha. Everything has a trading card game. This is not that version. This one doesn't come with a card. Uh, the uh, original Kingdom Hearts. Greatest Hits version, obviously. 
then we have uh, parts one, two, and three of Dot Hack. I actually had gotten part four from him um, back at the last Retropalooza, I believe, um, but did not pick up one, two, and three. I'm not sure if he actually had all three of them. But anyway, now I have these three. <laughs> and they are all complete with their DVDs. I don't know if you saw the first one. They all have their DVDs as well. Uh, we have Klonoa 2, Lunatea's Veil, and um, the first uh, Klonoa on the PS1 is definitely one of the most expensive PS1 titles in North America. It's a North American release, at least. Um, well over 100 bucks now. We have Grow Lancer Heritage of War and Grow Lancer Generations. Both of these, when they came out, they had like collector's edition versions, like big box ones that came with extra content. Um, I believe this game, Grow Lancer Generations, put out by Working Designs, was um, one of, I'm not going to remember this perfectly because it was a while ago, but uh, it was one of the reasons that Working Designs ended up shutting down. This company was famous for putting out awesome, you know, collector's editions or just cool, like, foil versions of their covers and stuff. Um, I believe it was Working Designs wanted to put out the two games, because this is a two-game package. They wanted to put them out separately, and something like Sony said, no, you have to put them together in a single package. I don't remember exactly why. Maybe, like, the printing runs of them, like the numbers that they, they were going to do weren't enough or something. But they ended up having to package them together, and they didn't make as much money off of it. So, unfortunately, I know that was, like, one of the, the things that ended up shutting down working designs. But later on, that guy, Vic Ireland, I believe is his name, started um, Gaijin Works and has put out a few games through there been a lot slower than it was back in the day but he has you know done some releases over the last you know few years uh next a couple more ps2 titles uh dragon quest 8 journey of the cursed king i think at home i have the like cardboard outer box like the special box that would have come with this uh just sitting there so i can put that with that we have dragon ball z budokai tenkaichi 3 Fortunately, Greatest Hits edition, but still a very sought-after game on the PS2 and the Wii. I believe the PS2 one it does go for a bit more than the Wii one. And next, a nice little stack of some GameCube titles. Uh, people are always looking for GameCube shit. We have Metroid Prime 2, Echoes, Eternal Darkness, Sanity's Requiem. have not seen this one in, in quite a while. I haven't come across this one myself for quite a while now. I'm covering my bed in video games back here. Uh, we have not one, but two copies of the Ocarina of Time and Master Quest editions. One being complete, one not. No manual for that one. And Bloody Roar, Primal Fury, no manual. Got to remember, as I'm showing you these, all these, like I said, average out to be five bucks. So now we're getting into a lot of games that, you know, five bucks is well worth it. Even some of these worst ones that are back here, like I mean, even the like Medal of Honor collection, that's still definitely worth at least five bucks. There's three games there, but like Wind Waker on GameCube complete, five bucks, great price. <laughs> Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, five bucks. You get the idea. I'm gonna stop saying five bucks now. Uh, Super Smash Brothers Melee also complete. And that is it for this box. Now let's grab the other one. There we go. This one has, I don't know, some of the my more of my favorite stuff in it. Let's first go through PS1 items. We'll start piling on this side of the bed, I guess. Uh, Tekken 2, first Tomb Raider. <coughs> Quite a few of these are greatest hits versions, but hey, uh, Tomb Raider 2, Tomb Raider 3, Tomb Raider Chronicles, and The Last Revelation. Don't really see those two uh, Tomb Raider games that often. Wild Arms 2. Uh, the first Sukaden with, yeah, it has the manual in there too. Didn't feel like it did. <coughs> uh, next up, Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. Uh, there is, let me pull all the Resident Evils out. Resident Evil Director's Cut. We have Resident Evil 2. And another copy of Resident Evil 2, the, the two different ones, the DualShock version and the original one where you could win a part in the movie that ended up taking a lot longer and coming out later 
Uh, I wonder if that person that won, that you could be in the movie. I wonder if they actually ever made it into the movie. I never looked that up. But if you know, <laughs> let me know in the comments down below. Also, feel free, since it's been so freaking long, in the past many months, what's like the coolest thing that you guys uh, have picked up? Have you gotten something super rare for your collection? Have you had like a mega find somewhere? Let me know down below and hit the thumbs up button while you're down there too. Uh, we have um, Spyro 2 and Spyro 3, uh, Year of the Dragon from like the collector's edition. Fortunately, I don't have the, uh, the third one to go with the collector's edition right there. A regular copy of Final Fantasy Tactics, original copy, and then the Greatest Hits version. <clears throat> uh, Final Fantasy 9, both Greatest Hits and regular. Um, if you go back and from, a, what, seven months ago and watch the VGS episode from Metropalooza, you can see I picked up quite a few good PS1 game stuff. This is what I ended up not buying from them at that time because I had spent, like, about, I got, like, Sukaden 2 from them and a few other, like, really high-dollar ones, so I kind of had to, uh, not grab these and spend all my cash. Uh, Metal Gear Solid, original Black Label release. Final Fantasy VIII. I should have grabbed some water because I am starting to get a scratchy throat now. Uh, Final Fantasy Chronicles, which is uh, four and Chrono Trigger. Anthologies, Final Fantasy. And not one, but two copies of Final Fantasy VII. So lots of like desirable, cheaper PS1 games, but... Um, I, I was going to mention you know this anyway at some point, but that sell good at the flea market. And if you don't know, yes, I am still at the flea market when I'm at home. Obviously not out on tour. Uh, Wagon Wheel Flea Market. And uh, if you ever happen to be in the area, you can still come by and say hi. I'm there on Sundays. Just Sundays, not Saturdays. Uh, we have, I think, the last PS1 game that was in there. The Greatest Hits of Silent Hill. One of my favorite games of all time, obviously. And I say obviously, you can't tell, but my hat on the other side... If you don't know, it says Silent Hill. Welcome to Silent Hill on it. Uh, we have a few PS3 titles. Lost Dimension. We got The Awakened Fake Ultimatum. And The Guided Fate Paradox. A few uh, Nintendo titles. Ghosts and Goblins. Friday the 13th. With a ton of writing on the back. And a copy of Super C. You know what? I actually thought that this was original Contra, up until I just pulled this out now. Because I guess I just looked at the top and was like, oh, Contra, Super C, not Contra. Um, we have some N64 games, Rogue Squadron, a rough Zelda Ocarina of Time, Pokemon Stadium, Mario 64 with a bit of fading there. Those need to be cleaned up, definitely. Another Pokemon Stadium, uh, 007 World's Not Enough, Star Fox, <laughs> Shadows of the Empire, Mickey Speedway USA, NFL Blitz 2000, and Uno, and Diddy Kong Racing. And then a few Super Nintendo titles, some pretty good ones though. Final Fantasy III, in really nice shape. A Super Mario RPG. Uh, Super Star Wars. Uh, one I don't see very often, Marvel Super Heroes War of the Gems. I picked up a sealed copy of that in a mega Super Nintendo, like box Super Nintendo collection, probably almost like, over a year ago now, actually. Uh, Super Smash TV. Killer Instinct. A kind of rare uh, Wii title, Arc Rise Fantasia, which is complete. It goes for around $30 dollars or so, maybe a teeny, teeny bit more, but about 30 bucks. A disc-only copy of A Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventure on the GameCube. And then, this little baggie is last up. We have sort of an odd lot here, but some pretty good titles. Fire Emblem Game Boy Advance. Uh, Fire Emblem Sacred Stones on GBA. Uh, a very hard to find, I've come across it twice now, this is like only a second time, unfortunately no case for it, but a very hard to find PSP game, which is uh, Jewel Summoner, put out by Atlas. Uh, Pokemon Silver, and two 3DS titles, we have Animal Crossing, too bad it's not Animal Crossing on the DS, 
you know, original DS because I had the freaking empty case for it. And then Pokemon Moon. Well, that's it, guys. Big mega pickup. Again, $5 a piece uh, it came out to be for all that stuff. Definitely some great games in there to get for $5 each. Uh, again, thank you to Magic Mike. And um, thank you all for the people that have stuck around and are still watching my channel. Once I am back from tour, I definitely plan to start the garage sale videos up again. Um, the, the break has, has been long and it was needed uh, to do other things in life, obviously to go out and you know work on tour and stuff, but I'm looking forward to getting back and doing some garage sale videos for you guys. So again, thank you for sticking around. Give the video a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, hit subscribe if you're not. I love you all. Peace. Thanks for watching.